Welcome to the Eye on Annapolis Local Business Spotlight. There are thousands of locally owned businesses in the area, some small and some large. Some you may know and others you don't. But one thing they all have in common is a great story, and we want to share it with you. Join us every Saturday as we talk to the founders, the owners, and the managers of local businesses you have come to know and love, and those you will come to know and love. Now here's your host, John Frenet, with this week's Local Business Spotlight. If you'd asked me about three years ago if uh, I'd be sitting in the middle of a vacant scrubby lot doing a podcast, I'd say, <laughs> no, no, no way. Um, but I'm down here in Edgewater at 731 Central Avenue with Gerardo Martinez, who is the owner. Actually, I don't know whether you're an owner, but you're the farmer of Wild <laughs> Kid Acres, which is a fairly new business in Anne Arundel County. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am the owner. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to your farm here. Thank this you. is this is. I mean, and it is a one of the better kept secrets of Anne Arundel County, and I discovered it when you're. I guess it was the Highland cow was that mm -hmm. uh ferdinand yeah he was born, born last yep. year and that was the the big attraction but you are so much more than that here in edgewater and it's a little bit it's it's a nice respite because i mean i'm literally within viewing distance of central avenue i see the cars going by yep. but it's like a little bit of an oasis here in suburbia yeah 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 we got really lucky um we were living in bethesda area before here and we wanted so you went from uber suburbia to less suburbia <laughs> yeah so we're so my wife and i are actually city people i'm from chicago and she's from buenos aires argentina but she moved to baltimore so we're both like straight up city kids uh, the reason we actually ended up buying a farm is um, I own another company called, uh, it's um, a leadership development company. And I got um, offered a job to go to Africa and do a leadership evaluation. Little did I know that it would change me more than I would probably help them. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, I, I would like to think that. But um, basically, it was like a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I brought my wife with me. They made us stay on their community farm which is also serves as their church and their school because you know poverty is such a thing in africa that it's you have to have everything centrally located just because the villages are so tough to live in so we stayed in the middle of the jungle on this church farm school <laughs> yeah and we noticed that like in africa there's so much poverty that they don't pay for eggs right like when you go to purchase eggs from this farm they have no money to give you. So what they would do is sit down and talk with you. And that exchange of human interaction over just capital moved us to the point where like my wife and I almost had a nervous breakdown because they're like not used to that, not used to people caring and actually talking to us. So, wow. so that's, that's, that's yeah. the currency. Yeah. So that was the currency while we were out there. Cause we were, I mean, we were like very far away from anything. And, uh, my wife, you know, in Africa, they call it Africa time because everybody's like nine hours late to everything. <laughs> but we realized that it was because they, they are taking the time to talk to the people in the village. Like if you see somebody, you know, you talk and you're like, hey, how's your life? How's, how's your family? How's your kids? You know, that when we were there, you, you know, to some context in the beginning, they were like, oh, yeah, there's like no suicide in Africa. There's no depression. And I'm like. That might not be true. You know, a lot of people say that. And then you go there, I'm like, I mean, there is, but they get to talk to people, right? And uh, they have the ability to just like go to the village and be like, I don't feel good. I don't like my wife, whatever, you know? Wow. But, yeah. So when we came back, um, this was in, we came back in the May of 2019. And I was like, how, how are we going to recreate that for my son? You know, how are we going to recreate that type of, like raw human interaction in the United States where we're so privileged that I can go up to anybody and just give them five bucks and I'll get eggs in a second. Right. Sure. So uh, even like farmer's markets. Right. So I'm like, how do I, how do I change that for my kid? Cause I want him to be able to like coherently understand people rather than just exchange with people. So we were like, the only way you can do that here is getting a farm, right? Like being a homestead. So providing food, milk, eggs for your own family. So we were like looking for places and we could not find 
anywhere to buy where we were in Montgomery County. Uh, we had to stay within, you know, driving distance to DC because my wife is an attorney in DC. Um, and I'm a Naval Academy grad. So I knew that Anne Arundel was a little bit more rural, but not, I never wanted to like live here. <laughs> right. So I got called by the Naval Academy to do a potential contract for the leadership company. And I just looked at like the Zillow or one of those apps, right? The real estate apps. And I saw it, I was like, hey, there's like five acres in Edgewater. I didn't know Edgewater at all because I was mainly in trouble when I was at the Naval Academy, so I never got out. <laughs> yeah, so I went and I came down here and I saw that these five acres were covered in trash. The house was like totally like pretty bad. It looked like it could get renovated, but it was like a 1930s home, like pretty bad. Sure, it was a 1930s home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so we were like, oh man, we can bargain. And then the day we went to go make an offer, um, the real estate agent met us here and there was a dead deer on the porch. And I was like, ooh, like another bargaining chip. <laughs> so, so we put an offer like pretty significantly lower than what they were asking just because I knew it knew, took so much work. And um, yeah, they, they accepted as long as we were willing to start a farm and not subdivide it and sell it into a giant development. So that was, that was the prior owner had wanted this to remain as a... Somewhat. Well, yeah, yeah. They wanted to remain as like a like big lot, basically open space. Yeah, or, you know, not down, yeah. Down here in this part of the county, people are pretty against like large developments. Sure, and it makes sense. So, kind of like fast forward, we found out that she was the daughter of the previous owner who had passed away, and that's why there was so much trash here. Because when that guy passed away, people were just using it as a unofficial dump. Yeah. It ended up that she turned out like to be very like positive for the farm, so she accepted the offer. And uh, her father, the guy who lived here, was the pitcher for the Hot Sox, and they had a baseball diamond in here. Which we didn't notice when we got here because it was all like overgrown and kind of trashed. Yeah, in that back corner over there that, where those cows wow. are. Yeah, there was a hot, they, the hot sox use it as a practice field, but it was mainly a softball field for the black females of Anne Arundel County. And the, I think the team name was either, it was the Vipers and changed the Cougars and they practice here. And that, yeah, we didn't find out any of this. Very cool. Yeah, we didn't find out any of this until we were like cleaning up. So, well, it's funny. The county just released a um, virtual sort of uh, tour of the um, the Galesville. Yeah, site. they, they yeah. talk about the hot shots. They talk about all all the different um, yeah. aspects of the African American life and the uh, civil rights movement in Anne Arundel County. Yeah, just just launched it two days ago, and it's really yeah. kind of fabulous, interesting, interestingly fabulous. Yeah, so right now we're working with the county to become a heritage site. So we're trying to build like a little like gazebo rotunda and dedicate it to the black history of the land here. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Well, so you go to Africa, and you and your wife have your life yeah. changed by, by, <laughs> yeah. this, by this experience. And certainly as a Naval Academy graduate, served in the Marines, how does a Naval Academy graduate Marine who, you know, arguably probably could go any number of different ways and directions yeah get this the farming bug and how have you built this i mean you this is not only a self-sustaining farm for yourself and your family mm -hmm. but this is it's an attraction it's an education point for the community yeah yeah so i had to follow it chronologically because it does the story doesn't make sense and so we like purchased the property it was like trashed and it, we purchased it under a renovation contract so we would renovate the house with a contractor. Well, and we agreed that with the mortgage company that I would clean up the yard myself. What happened was I, was I bought a few goats. Um, they were actually just given to us because the average age of a farmer is like 85 and goats are annoying. So, uh -huh. <laughs> so they gave us some goats and I was using them. What I would do is I would, we got this like temporary electric fencing and I moved them around to clear the, the vines that were entrapping the trash. So people were like noticing that, like, cause we're right on the main road. They're like, oh, there's goats there. What are these people doing? And then in November of 2019, you know, like a few months after we, or actually like a month and a half after we closed, the contractor came in and was like, this house is not renovatable. The inspector was wrong. This house is condemned. Uh, there's no way that you can build a house. The only thing that's good is the foundation. 
So, you know, we even had like a structural engineer look at it and we're like, oh crap. So now we're stuck in this loan without a place that we really can use. And we still had our house in like the Gaithersburg, Bethesda area. So we were like, not really like, I guess thank God for small favors. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Like, I think I can do this. Like, I think I can build a house by myself. I've never built anything in my life before. Now, question, what was your wife's reaction at that point when you, um, when you, when you said, I think I can do this? Yeah, yeah. by the end of this story, you're going to be surprised that she didn't kill me. <laughs> so, yeah, so she was like, all right. Like, if you, you know, she knows who I am. I'm very, like, I love, like, rock climbing. I'm a big adrenaline junkie, and I love, like, the challenge. If it seems, like, impossible, I'm going to do it. So... We took two months from November to the beginning of January to convince the mortgage company that I could build a house by myself. And I had, I've had previous construction experience as management, but like upper, upper management. So like not that. Was swinging the hammers. Yeah. <laughs> never touch a hammer. Right. So, and, but my dad is like, you know, he's like, um, he's an immigrant and we did all of our stuff ourselves. So like that work ethic and the ability to learn, like that is what my dad taught me. And I hated it growing up, but I love it now. <laughs> So I just watched YouTube for two months straight on how to build houses. I convinced the mortgage company and in January, I began the demolition of the previous house. So I bought like, I bought tools that I didn't even know how to use. (laughs) And I like started demolishing the house by myself. And that's when people really started to take notice because like big changes are happening to that house that was like right on the road, right? And I mean, it was it was an effort and my whole family was in it. We decided to move into our RV trailer on the property and I just started taking it down. And then actually two years ago today, I started um, I started the framing process. Like I ordered the framing wood and all that stuff. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we started building and then the neighbors really started to notice like, hey, this guy has goats. And he's alone building a house, right? There's only one dude out there every day. And I would always like wear the same clothes because I live in an RV. I don't want to get other clothes dirty. So I'd have these overclothes that I would wear. And then that was like a trash. And then I'd just take them off, leave them outside. And You're go. probably talking the neighborhood for, for... Oh, man. And like, I mean, you know, Anne Arundel County, like people are quite nosy. So, so yeah, we started in January, just kept building. Um and I was moving relatively quickly, uh, large in part thanks to COVID. You know, I didn't need to go do business meetings. I didn't need to go anywhere. And I was like, you know what? I'll just pause my leadership company and focus on getting this house done as fast as possible with one person. While I was doing that, people started pulling in and asking because we had gotten a pig too so like Mm -hmm. we started like ramping up the like farm stuff because we're here you know and my son you can see my son was here so what we did was we people kept pulling in and we it's a construction site a working farm and there's trash everywhere so we were like no you got to turn around get out of my driveway right it started to get very overwhelming especially over the summer of 2020 um and then in september of 2020 actually on september 1st a lady pulled into my driveway got out of her car and just started crying didn't say a word to me just wouldn't stop crying and i'm like you know i was in the marine corps and all this stuff and i'm like you know not that being latino makes you insensitive but like you can cry in front of me and i'll be like what are you doing right 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 (laughs) so she starts crying. I'm like, what are you doing? And this was the 12th time that day that I had come off of the roof. So I was like exhausted. <laughs> Sorry, my roosters are like, going the rooster is <laughs> but, uh, so I was like exhausted and I was like, okay, you can come in, but don't tell a single soul, right? Don't tell anybody that I'm letting you do this. You can go pet the goats. You can meet at the time we had a baby cow. It's like, you can meet them, you can pet with them, but like, don't tell anybody. And so she came in and she's, uh, if, you know, if you come here, you'll see that there's like wood chips everywhere. And uh, she was asking me all these like really actually very like well pointed questions on why I'm doing this similar to what we're doing right now. (laughs) She's like, why is there a giant pile of wood chips? What's with the trash? Because it was so overgrown that the community thought I was bringing trash here, but in reality, I was pulling it from the property and bringing it forward so that I could get it off the property. So 
she was asking like all these awesome questions. I got, I was got really excited about regenerative agriculture. So that's what we are. We're like very focused on the climate and trying to mimic nature as much as possible. And I had a lot of fun just like, Hey, this is how you like, this is how you make a goat super nice. This is how you make a horse really nice. This is what their role is here. Everybody has a role. There's a reason why there's wood chips so that we can rebuild the soil. And she's like, you really need to just like open up. Like you can teach people this stuff. You can make the world better. And as soon as she said that, cause we had her over for dinner that night, we were like, all right, like we were given the opportunity to have a farm and we have the ability to make the world a better place by showing people and letting them come in. So on September 5th, we decided to open up for, um, what we did on September 5th is we were just like, what we're going to do is we're just going to push out like calendar, like appointments, uh, through the app Calendly. Sure. And we were like one family a day. We asked that you donate whatever it was essentially free at the time. We were just asking like, if you could help us with the feed, that'd be great. On September 7th, word had gotten out uh, over two days and the, every single day was booked from September 7th until January 15th of 2021. Christmas, New Year's, all that. Thanksgiving, totally booked because we only did one appointment a day. So we were like, oh my God, that's like very overwhelming, sure. right? So, and I was like, well, if I'm like building here, like screw it like we can we can do this like it'll be fun we get to meet our neighbors <laughs> that'd be huge and we, you know living in dc area like you don't know the guy who lives four feet away from you right so i had a lot of fun because i was leading them you know leading these like tours of my garbage <laughs> <laughs> and uh <laughs> I was, we were having just like an immense amount of fun, like meeting these new people. People started like, I mean, when we asked for donations, they would show up with food. They would show up, you know, some guys would bring like, Hey, I like have these shingles. Do you need them for your house? So like, they'd be like, Hey, I got this extra window. Hey, we got, you know, they'd, they'd offer things that we would never expect. Right. And it's just cause we were just like, yeah, come on in, whatever, <laughs> you know? So we, we got this opportunity to educate, to reach people that like really until COVID happened, didn't care about farming. They didn't care about this property, you know, that type of thing. And then we started learning the history. That's where we learned the history about the softball field. Cause I didn't know, I just found a bunch of wood and old softballs and like Coke cans from like, or Coke bottles from like the thirties. I was like, what is this? Yeah. So we, in January of 2021, after that was done, we sat down and we decided, you know, let's make this a business. Let's make this a, way that we can actually cover liability and maybe it can be sustainable. But most importantly, let's make sure that we follow three rules. And we sat down for like hours, my wife and I determining these three rules. It's like, you can call them a mission statement, operating rules, whatever you want to call it. But like rule number one is everything we do must inspire the community. So if we're going to open, it has to inspire the community through the use of agriculture. Rule number two is it must provide some sort of economic development. So even though it's a, we're like an operating business, we are in a very unique venue. So we like let we let any business come and host a thing here. If we do it together, it's at no cost and we share revenue. If they're just renting the property, we'll make it as low cost as possible. And then the third rule is what we originally intended. It has to be climate smart regenerative agriculture. So every operation must be focused on rebuilding the soil, making sure that we don't like destroy the bay because we're right on the water. And that's like, you know, that third rule really like leads to all the other two or the other two and everything we do here. So we kind of like just like put it out because like our Facebook following grew, we got a logo and all this stuff. We put it out like, hey, like if you're a vendor and you want to host something unique, the farm is yours. If you want to do anything here, the farm is yours. We're going to do petting zoos on the weekends. It costs like, at the time it was like 10 to $15 per person. You know, it's, we're open for three hours a day and that's it on the weekends. And then that exploded. Like that was, there was like an immense, immense demand. Uh, we got confronted by these group of ladies that were like, I want to do goat yoga on your farm. And we're like, let's do it. Like we'll share the revenue. There's no cost. Like you can just start. So we've helped businesses to start out. 
we got confronted by a group of they're actually all individually came to us but they're therapists and they're like hey we're not certified to do like animal assisted therapy but we know that our clients could really use this especially because they can't come inside right so we're like good like let's do it we'll figure it out we'll figure it out that like you would just need to provide an animal handler right we started doing volunteer opportunities we got overwhelmed with volunteers like way too many so we had to, we had to control it and so now we're like doing all these like really unique really like fun things that take kind of a lot of work but it was it was so much fun we opened up for a farmer's market we didn't think that we would really like be the farmer's market to go to but since we're such a unique venue and we're so welcoming we had made partnerships over the like 2021 so we we had a lot of vendors come and we have beer because we we actually take the grain that they use from the beer process and we feed it to our animals so it's like a super win-win relationship wow <laughs> yeah we partner with several of them uh and it's it just like grew into this big thing where we're just like let's make as many friends as possible let's try to get the <laughs> try to boost the community and just like have fun with it and as long as we're covering costs like it's okay because it's our home i don't want to be like making this like a just like a business that just like pumps out you know right you're not event. turning into a six flags by any yeah yeah I, I, so, I mean this is amazing I mean hey you got into this whole regenerative and you know back to mother nature yeah by accident being in Africa. <laughs> yeah, yeah and because a woman showed up in your driveway yeah you got into creating a a venue and a a way to educate yeah yeah the community by yeah. accident by accident yeah yeah i think like the biggest thing that's like amazing about this place is one we get to talk to like you know conservation and all that stuff is awesome but most of the time you only reach the people who care right but here because we're like a petting zoo and you can come grab beer or like you know and there's like cornhole tournaments and stuff like that or yoga and you get we get to reach people that otherwise would never even know that there's such thing as regenerative agriculture well it is a hook i mean and yeah. that's that's all about ed education is i mean you know you you get them in here i mean i'm i'm this is cool for goat yoga i want a goat to crawl on my back yeah yeah um that, that's awesome uh but now when i get in here and i look around and i'm like okay well what's this fire pit going i mean oh mm -hmm. well we're taking our trash we're not adding to the landfill we're you know we're yeah we're taking this we're composting this we're you know yeah. um figuring out what we need to do is yeah. Yeah, people learn little bits yeah able to sustain themselves yeah and i think like one thing that we kind of pride ourselves on is that we're not always the teachers you know we partner with annapolis compost the composting company and people will come here and we have like their stickers and stuff and they'll be here on those market days and just be like oh hey this is what composting is like and like our partnerships really like help us reduce costs and that overhead of like having to have employees that like teach and stuff like that, especially because we have no infrastructure other than my home. Right. So that partnership has reduced costs and made it us capable to make a profit and reinvest it back into the community. So we did a lot of like pro bono education, <laughs> pro bono education stuff. Uh, like we brought you know, nonprofits in here and just did stuff for free with them. Kids who don't, would never have access to this stuff. You talked about the poverty, abject poverty in Africa. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, not to the degree and the extent that it is there, but there is an awful lot of poverty that are, yeah. that is amongst, with well, the poverty amongst plenty is I think a, a report mm -hmm. that comes out. And I've talked to a number of people that have said that people that are living in, in some of the public housing communities in Annapolis have never seen the creek or the bay yep. and i'm thinking this is spitting distance mm -hmm. from there uh you know we are you mentioned earlier about the life of privilege that we have we ha are privileged we can get in a car and we can drive someplace we can walk we can know we can we can do that but again this is something that is not necessarily available to you. are you working with the schools and uh, yeah so right now our biggest holdback um, so in 2021, we were open for 80 days, an average of three hours on those days. Mm -hmm. And we saw like, right, a little over like 5,500 people on the farm, which is like insane, right? And a lot of that was a bunch of pro bono stuff, but it was a lot of people. 
we've been confronted by a bunch of schools. We've done homeschool groups. We can only really sustainably have people here in small groups because we have no protection from weather. So right now we're trying to fundraise to build an education barn here. So it'd be, you know, 50 by 100, pretty large barn of super flexible space that we can do our agriculture stuff like milk the cow, you right. know, harvest honey, that type of thing. But most importantly is like keep the people safe in case the tornado comes through again. Right, right, <laughs> you know, right, right. So, um, just hope it doesn't go over the barn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so like that, that barn is going to be mainly to serve the agriculture purpose, but is also going to be a, give us the capability to, take field trips, you know, like, Hey, the parking is in the front. You have to come through the barn, sign the waivers. And this is where the safety is. This is also where the bathroom is because right. we have sure. porta potties. And then the other part of that fundraising is building a covered riding arena in the back where the baseball diamond used to be mm -hmm. like pretty close to it. And we're dedicating that to the black heritage, like I said, but um, that's also going to be a safety factor, right? Like in the summer, Animals get hot, humans get hot, we need shade. Uh, we have enough trees that we generate enough shade for the animals and stuff like that. But having like a outdoor, no walled cover is still a big deal, big. especially now with COVID. So those two, those two structures are gonna give us the capability to just go to Anne Arundel County Public Schools, to you know PG County Public Schools and be like, Field trips are now. Come on out, we got yeah, it. Yeah, we got it. You can come. You can see, you know. Are there enough videos on YouTube to learn how to build barns? And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our, our issue is that we just don't have the capital to build the barn right now because we have to make it meet life safety code. Well, okay. So your your capital and how you get that. I mean, our Wild Kid Acres is, is a technically a for-profit business correct but you do yes. have a foundation we so we do so the way the foundation because of covid took forever from the irs to get approved because mm -hmm. <laughs> they all went home uh, yeah they all just like stopped working <laughs> but um in the beginning we were like okay we'll start the foundation if we get approved whenever that may be because like back then it was like forever but we were saying like we'll operate as a nonprofit. But then when we when we got into the talks with the lawyers and things, it's like my personal property, I can't benefit from the fundraising on my personal property. Personal self -worth. Yeah, yeah. So there was a big conflict of interest. And then at the end of 2021, we realized that like, hey, we were, even though this is our first year of operation, we were positive, right? Like our costs to profit, was we were positive. So that's, uh, why not just fund the nonprofit with the for-profit so the, the for-profit is an operating arm. So that like I own the nonprofit, I own the land, I operate out of here. All of our profits now from 2022 on are getting funneled into the foundation and they are going to invest it outside of the farm, back into the community. If like, say the school can't afford to come out here or can't afford to visit any other farm, we'll pay for the buses, right? As long as they vote on it. Sure. And so my board is like, they're getting their self situated because we just got approved as a nonprofit. <laughs> so they're getting themselves situated to become, to serve as a foundation, like to give access to kids for agriculture. So whether that's scholarships, bus rides, field trips. And would that be, that would be the foundation would be the, I guess, the, the money funneling arm, if you will, to build the barn and the um so right or? well so right now we are pushing yeah the barn can't be built by the foundation unless it leases it back to me right because it's not my property oh, so yeah. i would have to lease it to them and then they would have to build it and then and lease, lease it back, it back to you. right so so right now we're focusing on building those strictly through the for-profit arm um, and like the mission is so similar you know with just the operating arm and it's right. the same person on February 18th, I'm pitching the Maryland State Congress, so senators and delegates, on a bond bill in order to get the $250,000 to build these two structures. So we're my fingers are yeah crossed we're, we're our fingers are crossed. Hopefully, you know we have Democrats and Republicans supporting it. We sure. we've had the Speaker of the House here. We've had the Governor's Cabinet here. We've had you know but there's our, nothing political about yeah this. yeah there's nothing so. You know, like supporting us is a uh, awesome, and people see that, so that's why they visited. Even though we don't, I mean, 
Can you imagine the speaker of the house coming out here? It's like, yeah. please wear boots, ma'am. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Scrape the poop off. Your, yeah, off scrape your the heels. poop off of your heels. You're very influential and wear a far, farm full of poop. <laughs> but, right, know, right. So, so not that I'm like want to say it's guaranteed, but like we're very positive about it. And then I could build based on like because there's funding in that to get laborers. So I'm not going to do it by myself. We could build it with the help of the community because we're going to invite the community to help us build it too. And I can teach people how to like build stuff. Uh, we could probably build it within like a month and a half. So our ideal situation is like summer, midsummer. We have both those structures built and then dedicate them uh, the, when we open. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Well, okay, so we got fitness going on here. We've got yoga with goats climbing on your back. Yeah. Um, and they're loud goats. I saw them at the 4th of July parade, and they yeah. were very, very yeah. vocal. Yeah, they are. <laughs> they're very annoying. <laughs> with, um, you, I saw on your website, that which the website, by the way, is wildkidacres.org, mm -hmm. and you have camps, summer camps for kids? Is yeah. that something new this year since you're so new? Yeah, yeah. So that's new this year. We, um, the bond bill isn't guaranteed but we know that we can service you know at least a small group of kids right now and we saw the demand so it's it's not like crazy low cost like it's not like 50 bucks for a week but it's 30 300 for the week and it's in a low cost access to the farm and we have an education program built around essentially like how you would build the foundation of a farm from soil to animal behavior, to livestock management, to crop management, and then you end and have fun, really. <laughs> Did you ever see the movie The uh, Biggest Little Farm? Yes, I, I know them, actually. You know John and Molly? I, I, uh, I like message them over email and stuff like that. I've never... Very, very similar. I spoke with them when they when that film came out. They oh, were really? here for the Annapolis Film Festival. Oh, cool. And uh, it, this is somewhat... There's some parallels I see to that. I mean, they gave up this big city life. Yeah. Uh, and they, they, they took a, pardon the language, but a piece of shit property. Yeah. And nurtured it over years. Yeah. Just to be this flourishing thing. And I really do see some parallels between what yeah. you're doing here. Yeah. We watched that when we were living in the trailer. And my wife was pregnant living in the trailer. So I was like, this is what we're trying to do. You know, it's like, we're going to remake this land and you know, at the time we weren't open and she was like, I'm going to stab you to death. <laughs> <laughs> I am pregnant, living in an RV with no home to go to. <laughs> I, was like, right, right, right. I was like, it'll be fine. There's trash in my backyard. What could yeah, what, what possibly go wrong? Yeah, my son, you know, luckily we had like food. We had Wi-Fi before we had electricity. <laughs> to, well, to, yeah, yeah I, I don't think we can survive without Wi-Fi or yeah. internet today, but... Uh, birthday parties that seems like a perfect place to do. is that something that yeah 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 we do birthday parties venue rentals you know we just do petting zoos on the weekends right now they're only limited to like sunday we're very much focused on fundraising right now so we're kind of limited in operation because we still have to you know make sure that everybody lives <laughs> yeah but also I'm trying to like do how we met, you know, like I'm really trying to go out, do speaker series, try to fundraise, you know, cause like uh, no money is guaranteed until it's in your bank account. So, so like, we're really trying to like grow really everything we're doing is focused on the barn. Um, cause that's really what our capability and safety standpoint, you know, our liability costs are very high right now. Cause we don't have a place to keep people safe. You know, like we can't keep EpiPens cause we have yeah. no refrigerators. Our only bathroom is inside my own house. Yeah. Um, so our operations are kind of minimal right now We we do a lot of the private events like birthday parties and stuff like that. And we're always happy to do that. But the like being just blanketly open to the public for them to come whenever Let that me. is impossible. Well, it sounds right like now. you're growing the uh, growing the business like you're growing your farm just pretty organically from you know one step at yeah. a time and yeah. just small steps lead into bigger steps. Yeah. I mean, how can we support you? I mean, you, you, so, you, know, you said it's 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 growing revenue. We need to we need to improve upon this. We need to get that barn. We need to get yeah. the shelter yeah. in the back by the diamond. I mean, how can we? How can we support you? I mean, obviously, we can make appointments and come here and see yeah, and do the yeah. birthday parties and everything else. So, I mean, right now, there's there's two big things. There's, like, the awareness that we even exist because we've never paid for advertising because we knew we would get overwhelmed. The awareness and then just knowledge about the barn and maybe if people could donate to the GoFundMe that's on the, on the webpage, you'll see a donate button, and that's... 
you know, a GoFundMe, which would go straight to the barn fund for the for-profit. So it'd be built and then any excess goes back into the foundation. Just like the profits from last year, that all got put into the barn fund. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So I'm lucky. We're both lucky enough that we have good jobs outside of the farm. And I understand that that barrier for entry is not there for all beginning farmers. So the education is a really big deal to us. So we're everything we do is funneled back into the barn so that we can then inspire the next Gerardo, right? <laughs> Well, you're, I mean, you're, you're so fortunate in that you, that you do have something outside to be able to do that because I mean, this is, you know, certainly as I look around here, I mean, this is a labor of love. And if you had any doubt about that, I guess you should have seen you two years ago, climbing on the roof in the same old clothes, swinging yeah. a hammer. Over the- yes. Yes. And that's like, uh, yeah, this labor is insane. And it's, it's brought so much. I, I don't even know how to explain it. Like community charity. When we had gotten the cows and all these bigger guys, the horses and stuff, we were in deep need of fencing. And some guy heard about us and was like, I got $80,000 worth of the split rail fencing. Come pick it up. It's yours. And I was like, I'll be there tomorrow. <laughs> and That's he, awesome. Yeah. In the middle of like the huge lumber spike, you know, it was, it was a gift that he doesn't, I don't even think he knows how important that was. The only unfortunate thing is I put it all in by myself with one other friend. <laughs> so yeah. it, was, it was, that friend is, uh, he hates me now. <laughs> His back hurts. <laughs> no, he's a great friend. He always comes over and helps. Well, you, I mean, you did say that, I mean, you mentioned that your wife works in DC, but you said you've got a job outside. I mean, that's the leadership company. So that's, yep. yeah. is that, is that going to go away at some point for you? <laughs> he, is that he, is that in your plan as you look down the future? It is. Uh, it's funny you bring that up. I was literally just talking about my wife with it, or the, about this with my wife. Um, yes, I fully plan to be a hundred percent committed to this farm and the impact that it has, as well as my future plan is to either dissolve or sell that company. Uh, or just like, just stop running it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and be a hundred percent committed to this farm. And what I really would love to do for this farm is to become more of a, a hub, right? So we're like the education center where the access for farmers to come sell. I would really like to be like spider web that into, you know, like years down the road, maybe on another location, but like right now I would love to have like make ease of access. So create software that people can just go on the Wildcat Acres website or app and just order like fresh strawberries. And if we don't produce them, the next farmer you've down got, the line, you've got, you've yeah. Got an with. yeah. So that farmer sells their stock, you know, and then, um, like it's a beneficial cause they don't have to be customer facing and that's what we like to do. So like that is our strength. We like to be customers facing. So it's like being at a farmer's market without having to be at a farmer's market, which is good for everybody. You know, you just come pick up your box full of amazing groceries and <laughs> go home. <laughs> You've turned a scrub lot into something absolutely amazing here in Edgewater, Gerardo. I mean, this is, yeah. I mean, this has got to be, you know, getting getting married, having a wife, the kids, the whole things aside, take those out of the equation. <laughs> this has to be one of the most, you know, prideful, proud thing, proud things that you've done for yourself. I've got to think. I mean, yeah, it, it's in, unconscionable to think. My father was a marine, but I mean, it's you know, to think that here's a, a naval academy graduate, a marine, who from Chicago. Yeah, you know, so I mean, but, I mean, this isn't like the the kid from Nebraska that, <laughs> that's been missing his farm all of his life. Uh, just decided to say, you know, had an experience that was literally life changing, and you've turned around and transformed that into changing other people's lives as well, which is yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. I try to, to keep myself humble. At least my wife does, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what wife and kids are for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I love it. And if I am changing lives and, or, you know, at some extent might be saving them, you know, like that, that is why I do it. Like, I don't care about the glory or the pride behind it. If I save one life or affect one kid's future for the positive, 
it's worth a life of labor. <laughs> and, and, and it doesn't take a lot. It's just, just little, little things yeah. and little aha moments. I mean, if you hadn't taken that trip to Africa, this yeah. you know, never, never, never would have happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody that's listening, wildkidacres.org is the website to go to. You can book appointments to come to the farm to check it out. When is the farmer's market? I mean, we're in the doldrums of winter right now. But. Yeah, so, so this year, because, because of the lack of the barn, we're only planning it for once a month again mm -hmm. uh, throughout the summer months if the barn gets built before the summer it'll it'll probably move to every other weekend okay so um and then hopefully we can the next big project after the barn is that like kind of the software right community so, supported agriculture type thing again on that barn go to the gofundme but you can access that through again wildkidacres.org mm -hmm. Uh, come on out here to see this. Uh, even if you just drive by to take a look at mm -hmm. what was a you know a scrubby trash filled uh, you know overgrown parcel that you probably ignored on Central mm -hmm. Avenue. Uh, it's about a quarter mile. I'm thinking just past Camplets on the right. Yeah, we're yeah. I mean Camplets. You can see the Camplets entrance yeah. right now with the trees being. Yeah. Once you pass Camplets Road, just slow down. It's on, <laughs> it's, it's it's on the right. It's hard to miss. There is a sign out front. Gerardo Martinez, thank you so much, not only for being here, but for doing this. This is um, this is amazing, and I, I, I appreciate what you've done. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thanks for uh, taking the time to even listen to me. <laughs> no, no, no. This has been, been my pleasure. Thanks for listening to this week's Local Business Spotlight. Please make sure to visit ionanapolis.net for all your local news, events, and opinion. And in case you haven't already, please subscribe to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, where we bring you all the day's local news direct to your phone, tablet, or computer in about 10 minutes. It comes to you at 6 a.m. every Monday through Friday, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.